What's going on gamers? Welcome to my one and only build tip video. It's gonna be fantastic. It's gonna be great. Uh, we're gonna be having timestamps down in the description or on the timeline here of the video. If you wanna go to a specific part, um, if you wanna go ahead and skip to the first tip, go ahead, but I'm gonna explain to you what they are real fast. Uh, I'm gonna go through essentially everything that I did and all the techniques that I found and utilized for essentially getting fourth place with my uh, build here in the build competition. So the first thing we're gonna get, discuss is how to get this uh, exploded metal look and distressed blocks and creating rubble essentially from different kinds of blocks. And uh, we're also gonna mess around with some stuff that I haven't messed around with. Uh, I'm gonna talk about what you can do to hide torches. So like, you know, kind of how we've got these torches hidden in the ground, not these ones specifically, but stuff like these brazers and things. Everybody thought they were altars for the longest time, asking me how many I had, how I had so many altars in my base. But yeah, we're gonna talk about that. Um, I'm gonna talk about like using that concept to kind of come up with cool ideas to more or less like create cool things using like fences and windows to make like railroads or any other kind of illusion for different types of items. Um, I'm gonna break down exactly to the science of the math and I have a chart and everything I'm gonna utilize to show you guys um, how to take full advantage of a max level altar uh, and everything that's involved in that. I'm gonna show you how I pretty much used foundations to dig out this entire underground cave we are going to give you some tips and tricks on how to get lots of stone and dirt. Like I've got all these city block walls. A lot of people were curious if I used the resource farm world. No, I didn't. I farmed all of it myself and it's actually quite easy to get these resources. And uh, we're gonna talk about a few other things like the lava and pretty much how I created this giant forge with the crucible and all of that good stuff. A lot of people have been asking about the lava. Uh, we're also going to give you some sculpting tips if you didn't realize uh, this entire archway here uh, was completely sculpted and it's nice and round shaped. I'm going to give you some ideas and tips on that and just some other things in between some final stuff. But like I said, if you want to skip to a specific part, go ahead and do that. We're going to go ahead and get into it, guys. Make sure you hit the like button for me and consider subscribing if you're not already. We are on our way to the 100,000 mark. Let's go. We're grinding. All right. So tip number one, how to create this uh, rubble look or the exploded metal kind of looks that we've got going on here. This is kind of a hidden feature in the game. It doesn't really tell you a whole lot about it. Uh, but essentially what you do is you use cobblestone as a kind of a tool here. So let's just let's just set something up really simple here real fast. Um, so you've got your bronze blocks. You're going to put, you know, all your you're gonna put your blocks essentially at the bottom like this or whatever, anything you wanna create rubble on. Uh, and then you're gonna select some cobblestone or rough stone blocks, apologies. And uh, you're gonna set it on top of it like this. And what this is gonna do, now when you do this, you're gonna to wanna to cover all edges, uh, especially for the metal. Uh, you're gonna to wanna to cover all edges of the metal so you'll be able to see like underneath or whatever. Uh, if I dig down a little bit here, hold on, I don't have a pickaxe on my bar. You'll be able to see that the only visible stuff is, you know, the metal here. And you could, if you had something floating like this, you could probably go ahead and uh, put some on the bottom as well. So when it comes to metal, it takes a whole lot of pickaxing to actually break it, if it's even possible. I don't even really know, uh, but what you'll do is you'll just break the cobblestone and you'll start to see that uh, broken metal come through. Now, another thing that I've learned and figured out along the way with this is that uh, if you have a flat area, like we have on the top here, you will notice that that flat area doesn't, uh, doesn't kind of feather out like that. And what you can do to fix this is you just uh, more or less make, oops, it only breaks on corners. It doesn't break in the centers. So if we place these like this and then do the same thing with the cobblestone, we just kind of wrap it all up, wrap it all up here like this, and we hit every corner. Then we can go through and break the cobblestone again in order to get like a more feathered look. And this is kind of the strat that I used for the treasure room down there. Uh, so we break this up like this, and that gives us 
you know, more, more of that broken look. Um, now, when it comes to building just like these rebel, rebel piles, kind of like this, uh, same concept, except for I use city wall block. This isn't city wall block. This is like stone block or something like that. But you hit it twice and it actually, it looks like you get a different effect. Uh, and we're going to go experiment, experiment with that a little bit. I've got something set up at my other base, but pretty much the same concept. You break the cobblestone. It pretty much breaks whatever block it is that you have underneath it. And this one specifically looks really freaking cool when it's broken. Um, so like I said, I've got a little testing thing set up. Let's go try it out and see what it, what happened. All right. So I've got a line of all these blocks set up in this particular order, uh, starting with, uh, let's go all the way to the top here. So from left to right, we've got bronze, iron, well, oops, metal bone block. Okay. It's not left to right. For some reason it mixed them up. What a weird deal. But more or less, we've got just about every block here. Uh, you can kind of decipher and decide which one's which. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this rough stone here and we're going to set it on top of it. And we're going to break the stone on top of all this and just kind of see, you know, what it does. What it does, what it does, what it does. All right. So we already know what the metals do pretty much. Uh, it's more or less just going to do it on the ends. Unless we used like a staircase or something like that. All right, and it's wigging out on me. So the metals, I mean the woods. Dude, why is it like going crazy like this? It does not like having all these different blocks connected to each other. All right, so we can see we get kind of a different, you know, a different breakage from each individual rock. It gives us kind of a different texture for each individual rock. You know, this is the flint stone here on the end. Uh, it doesn't, I wish I had a better example for you guys, but I just don't have a whole lot of all these blocks. Uh, you know what? Hold on. Let me do something real fast. All right, here we go. This will be a better representation just because it's all angles. So we'll go ahead and, uh, I didn't place any wood down on this one this time, uh, because the wood kind of doesn't really do this whole thing. It does something totally different. And I'll show you what that is here in just a second, but we're going to line all of this with the cobblestone blocks like so. We'll go through and we'll break it and then you'll get a better idea of what some of these look like uh after broken there we go so that's bronze uh that's the well blocks uh the bone blocks kind of does this like interesting just adds a textured bone feel to it uh let me try and see if i can just crank this up one time to balanced maybe see if that helps with showcasing these textures uh, Flint doesn't really do a whole lot. It just kind of adds some pebbles. It looks like to the to the whole thing There we go. This one is uh, Let's see here. So that was well block bone block flint. Uh, this is castle wall. Next one is refined stone Refined stand sandstone, I think There we go. Yeah, we, you can see we kind of get this uh, rubbly very rubbly look um, this has got to be the city walk city wall blocks, which is one of the ones that I utilized in my build. All right, there we go. More broken up bricks and things like that. So you can see uh, for finer detail work. Oh, that must have just been regular. Oh, okay. So I see what it is. Um, the sandstone and the cobblestone doesn't survive very well. Now that one gives you a really debris looking look. I like that a lot. All right, there we go. You guys get the picture, you get the you get the joint, you can kind of mess around with it, but if you want to texturize your blocks in any way, shape, or fashion, uh, this is a really cool way to do it, especially for the distressed metal look. Um, lastly, I'm gonna show you guys, at least for this part of the video, I'm gonna show you guys the, the wood, and by this we're going to do pillars, and we will place uh, just a rough wood block there, and then we've got uh, the next one, which is palm wood block. And then we've got tarred. And then we've got half timbered. And I think there's going to be one more here that I might have missed. Oh, shroud wood. Yeah. All right. So here's we got the we got the different woods. And this one is very dependent on where you place your pickaxe. Um, and it can also be lessened if you use a like a least effective pickaxe. So. If I hit it right here in the middle twice, you'll see that it kind of, actually it only took once, okay. But see how it kind of exploded? Gives us this like exploded look. 
Now, if you hold your pickaxe to where only the tip of the blue circle is actually touching, it'll be a little bit nicer on it, kind of like that. You guys kind of have to mess with it. Uh, same thing here. All right, I don't know what the heck that was all about. Obviously, the refined wood block has a little bit more health, uh, so you do a little less damage to it, but you can see it kind of breaks it, breaks it apart like that. Here we go again with the tarred wood blocks, another kind of weakish block. Same thing here with the... Uh, but this one, wow, we get some pretty wild uh, destruction from the half timber blocks. That's pretty awesome. And the shroud wood is also another weak block, so you can kind of just do whatever you want with that. But yeah, man, this distressed look is actually pretty awesome. You can use this for so many different things. And uh, we'll go ahead and we'll move on to the next part, which is going to be hiding torches and braziers inside of blocks, etc. All right, so as you can see, I use this technique pretty much in a lot of different areas. We've got one here, we've got another one here, and then uh, we've got essentially these kind of torches we made down here, all using the standing wall torches. Now, the reason I chose the standing wall torches is because they are actually the cheapest, surprisingly, torch to make, in my personal opinion, as far as like, you know, relation to the amount of materials you need to get, how fast you can get them, all those good things but uh nothing too crazy here as far as explaining the way that this works um obviously pretty much all you have to do we'll go ahead and remove this stuff like that and you can see that uh these are just inset into the ground just kind of like this i also use this might be a tip i use this one for deleting things because it's like the least biggest one i guess all right so here we go so yeah, you can see we just set that right there. Um, and then I grab the little small square block here. And if I can get it to cooperate, if you place it first, right, your torch first, you can go through and then kind of just place these around like that. And before you know it, you've got your flame hidden just like that. And we, and we, so another idea here is you can have this like pillar built and then you could just come through and you know dig out a little spot like this right in the middle get our brazier back on our bar and then you can kind of place it in there just like that and then you come back through with just another flat small flat block and just like that you have these uh hidden torches in the ground which looks pretty cool right looks like a bowl of fire on the ground same situation here uh for all for this one all we did was cut out this spot here dropped one more block down to get the right height uh, and this is all subjective, you know, if you're trying to use something like this to hide this. This also works for all kinds of other things, like if you wanted to, you know, make a, a rail cart track like this. Um, this is pretty much just fences and things, fences and windows set up on top of like uh, pretty much to the point to where they just poke through the floor. And you can see that there. But I think it pulled off kind of the whole minecart look. Or the minecart track look, I guess. So yeah, make sure you use any item in the game to try and create some interesting illusion uh, for bringing your build kind of to life a little bit. All right, the next thing we're going to talk about is your altar. Now, a lot of people don't believe me, but this entire base is built on this one altar. Um, and I'll show you exactly the process I went through and help you out with the math a little bit if you care about it that much so i've got something drawn out here real quick um and this what this illustrates is a altar in the center okay um every foundation or wall normal size foundation or wall is eight blocks by eight blocks uh so with the actual altar itself this altar is eight blocks wide you can test it by grabbing a one by eight and you can see bada boom it is eight blocks wide so with that being said at that maximum size, you can go 160 blocks in every direction. This includes left, right, forward, backwards, up, and down. So say if we're looking at this uh, from the top down, you can see here I've got it broken up into foundations. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 foundations right there, uh, which is going to give us exactly 152 blocks of distance here now you'll see that i've got a little four left over to get to that max 160 and that reason being is it counts the altar from here 
to here, this whole spot right here. Change the color of it just to give you an idea. Uh, hold on one second. There we go. So this four counts towards this direction, just as, you know, this four here, same difference, would count towards this direction going up. So you start counting here, one, two, three, four, and then all the way up, uh, 160 rows all the way up to the top, which is why we also add this additional four at the top because what's happening is we more or less have to take off four uh, because to equal that 160. But if you utilize this idea, right, uh, you'll be able to take full advantage of your base size, lift your altar up off the ground. So potentially, you know, if you're not building anything under the ground, you could do something to have your altar up a lot higher. Uh, so you can build everything taller just on one altar. Hopefully all that makes sense. And uh, yeah, each one of these represents a foundation that is eight blocks by eight blocks wide or a wall that is also eight by eight blocks wide. So yeah, that's how I come up with the math for uh, pretty much taking maximum advantage of my altar. If you notice the floor and the ceiling and the walls and everything inside of the cavern are maxed out in every direction. So yeah pretty crazy all right next i'm going to show you guys a lot of you guys already know this tip so you might want to go ahead and skip forward uh but if you don't um i've done a lot of digging in the game mass land removal obviously with taking out over 1.2 million block area uh underneath my my dwarven abandoned ruin over there and the absolute best way to remove land is by using a foundation more or less and if i could find my rough stone blocks here uh, you'll be able to see that once you remove land like that, it removes a perfect square of land. And that makes for really good, just like, you know, taking good care of everything, making sure it looks all good. But more or less, you right click, place your foundation, right click like this, and you got yourself a perfect hole. And you can just kind of go from there. And if you ever see any of these like extra pieces, you can just clean those up really quickly like that. Um, another thing that other people say is you could just right click with the with the land block but what you get with that is you get this kind of like inconsistent looking hole uh you can use that one or you can use you know this one works as well and you can essentially just like look down and just dig like this and this i could see being faster if we didn't have that little cooldown in between the ability to remove the land right click more or less so if they got like rid of the right click cooldown, this would be a faster way, but this is only a one by eight. So the foundations are actually a, you know, eight by eight by four, which is gonna allow you to remove a lot of land a lot faster and just make it kind of look pretty along the way. Uh, and also allows you to kind of count out your uh, altar space and things of that nature. Um, so you could use either way, but I will tell you that after much, much testing, the foundation strat is a lot better if you're trying to remove a ton of land now any land terraformation you do while you're inside of your build area um is going to never fix unless you remove your altar so what i do when i'm digging for stone or i'm collecting or harvesting stone um i will come right outside of the build area and i will just look down and i'll take like six pickaxes with me and i'll turn on some netflix and I will just look down and dig, turn the sound off like that. Just look down and freaking, you know, dig, dig my life away. Now, one pickaxe, one iron pickaxe all the way down uh, with the obvious uh, uh, skill buff here. You have a 10% chance to get additional resources. I get about, uh, I get about a stack, about 10,000 or not 10,000, about, uh, yeah, 10,000 city wall blocks worth. So about a thousand stone. Uh, anywhere from a thousand to twelve hundred stone based on one pickaxe now how i get dirt is i will go into a area that's kind of you know flat ish and i will stand in the middle and i will just kind of create a circle around myself and the reason you want to do this uh is because when you chop an actual full block of dirt you'll get uh, a lot more like six to ten rather than uh, if you just kind of clean up these like little areas like this, see so you get like five and some stone, two and some stone. Uh, you're just pretty much just trying to take the top layer off the land and then I'll just kind of chop this up on underneath me. 
And you get dirt a lot faster than you get stone. Obviously, that you get in, you know anywhere from like what looks to be like six to eleven. But once you clear out a spot, you know you're done with it. And uh, once you log out and log back in, you won't have this. This will all fix itself, so you won't just have this like random, you know, hole in your in your yard essentially. <laughs> so yeah, that's how I collect so much stone and dirt to uh, to make all my blocks for building. Next thing I'm going to talk about is coming up with a concept for your builds and essentially kind of drawing them out before you start building. Now, we don't have a creative mode to go in and fly around and mess around with ideas, you know, kind of like Minecraft. You're like, hey, I want to go make this arch. I'm going to go build it in creative real quick and make sure it looks good before I waste all my time building it. Uh, for those of you that do know, if you build something, it can take quite a while to chop it down especially if you remove blocks from it it won't allow you to remove that full block anymore and you got to take like each individual little piece and it's very annoying so i highly suggest you find a program or something that works for you i personally utilize illustrator by just creating like one individual square copy and pasting it and just kind of going with that now this is totally not a concept art for my next mega build that i am currently building uh, but like something that I would do is let me, uh, let's see here. Let's ungroup all this and then regroup it. There we go. So I could come in here and say, I just wanted to like make this like stand out a little bit. I could, um, if it's going to ungroup it like, hello, I just hit group again. There we go. All right. So say I want to make this kind of like a archway type thing. I can grab these and go this way um and then maybe that and then maybe something like that and then we'll go like this and then i can grab more and go like this and i can tell that that's too much too steep of an angle so we can come out this way maybe more and you just kind of play with it right you get the kind of you get the kind of base idea of what you're going for like that and then you can tell that this one's too much and that one's too much and then you kind of scroll back and you look at it and you're like oh that looks pretty cool um, and then if you're like me, you essentially turn it around uh, and put it on the other side. So you're like, oh, okay, that's actually a pretty cool looking structure. Um, but you're like, ah, this one, you know, could remove these, make it look a little bit better. You just kind of scroll back, take a look at it again, remove these, maybe take these ones down like that. Yeah, so now we have this kind of cool archy curve thing. And uh, now you know that you know, you can come in here and count your sides, go into the game, you know, count this like that's six. Uh, here's another six right here. This is four. So you go in and kind of build your outline of everything and then fill it all in. This is a lot of what I did for pretty much every part of my underground build. Uh, here you can see the land arch that we made into the forge did the same thing here. Um, and then we also got the like the big uh, Viking sculpture thing. I kind of drew this out uh, um, with a couple different concept ideas like that. That's that's pretty much how I came up with all these. Like, how does it, you know, when I scroll out, like, how does it look? Does it look good? Can I change something, you know, to make it look a little bit better? Uh, here's the archways with me actually going through, finding out like what blocks I was gonna use in each different area. Just think of a good concept. Don't waste your time with building something, tearing it down, building something, tearing it down, because I personally have done that a lot, especially in this town. Um, I didn't really have a concept. I just did a lot of block placing and guessing. And there's a lot of things that are off by one block this way or off by another block that way. And it's just pretty annoying, you know, just create a concept for sure. Uh, next, we're going to talk about the lava. All right, this lava right here. Um, so this may look extremely complicated but it's actually very simple it's literally just sand is all this is so if i just get my rough stone block here and we just uh actually it has to be the terrain block i'll just right click on this and you can see that it's literally just sand with brazers underneath um now you can use you can do this with you know dirt to make like a tar pit or something like that you could use um, also sand and sandstone, I believe, or limestone, possibly. You could do the same concept with, but with this particular design, I used sand. Shout out to Triple Bud for helping me come up with this idea. And uh, also I utilized these types of brazers 
because they have the highest flame and the biggest surface for surface area uh, for a flame. So yeah, and this this sand works really good too because it had, kind of has these like black peaks on it. You can go through with the uh, rake and kind of lower it or raise it if you want to, you know, angle it up. And now we've got this like spiky thing, you know, maybe like a splash or something. I don't I don't know exactly, but uh, yep. Turned out pretty cool. Plus, I like the uh, I like the heat sound from those brazers as well because they're a lot louder than any of the other ones. Like these don't make that sound, right? These don't make a sound at all. Maybe a little crackly crackle, but those ones are like. <laughs> so yeah, super cool idea. All right, next sculpting tips. All right, so say we want to make something really awesome, okay? And you suck at sculpting, but you kind of have a general idea of of anatomy and uh say you build it out of you know like let's say like this is a rib cage or something okay now sculpting a rib cage just with land blocks might be a pain but what we can do here and i'll try to get this even so that we get a good uh idea matter of fact let me kind of build this real quick and then i'll uh be right back all right so here's kind of my sculpting tip and i'm going to utilize this a lot because i have a crazy freaking idea for my next build um but more or less what you're going to do is uh this will work a lot better on a larger scale but you can use like cobblestone blocks to kind of build like a skeleton think about how like a claymation sculptor uses wires before they start packing the clay on um in order to create whatever it is that they're trying to create to kind of hold the shape of what they're wanting to do but say this is like a you know like a rib cage or something like that you can place this down and then come through with your uh you know with your blocks of whatever you choose and like i said this you could definitely tell that this would work better if it was bigger because they're too close together but if i just use like the top and the bottom or something like that you know you can kind of Kind of go with it there you could use this block even kind of you know get a little bit more texture going fill in the middle this is a terrible example but you guys get the concept right like build a giant skeleton of a head and then go through and poke around with it uh it just gives you kind of better guidelines rather than just you know just building a rainbow like this which by the way if you want to just make us an archway uh out of land just literally stand in one spot and just build like a rainbow and it makes a pretty good archway like that too <laughs> i learned that a lot with my little cave entrances so um yeah so those are my terrible sculpting tips <laughs> and the very last thing i'm gonna say is pick a cohesive palette that might not make a whole lot of sense to a lot of people but essentially pick five blocks two blocks to five blocks as far as like actual blocking you want to use for your build stick to a theme make it cohesive if you make some sort of you know lamp holding structure like this or or whatever or like my lamp walls uh continue to use the same thing throughout your whole build uh don't just like put like a bronze lamp over there and a candle over here and a you know a test standing torch over there and a brazier over there you know what i mean like keep it all cohesive because as you can see in my dwarven underground uh abandoned mine shaft there everything looks similar it has that grab to it that it feels like it's all one cohesive piece with consistency throughout the entire throughout the entire build so with that being said guys i hope you grabbed something from this video and if you please did hit the like button and consider subscribing for me because i can promise you if you like giant builds or awesome builds or mega builds or any builds in enshrouded or any survival game period that i'm your guy you guys have a wonderful day thank you for watching and we'll see you on the next one peace out